Um, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Richard Dennis. I'm the director of the Australia Institute. If I haven't uh, met you at one of these events before, um, tonight we're uh, we're privileged to have Ronnie Khan with us. Uh, Ronnie is the founding director of Oz Harvest, which is a non-profit organisation that rescues food surplus from restaurants and other outlets across Sydney, Canberra, Wollongong, Newcastle, Adelaide, and I'm now told almost Brisbane. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so she'll be talking to us tonight about the fact that Oz Harvest uh, collects over five tonnes of food every day uh, and delivers the equivalent of 15,000 meals a day from more than 900 food donors uh, across Australia. And in her talk tonight, uh, she's going to talk about uh, food waste and the challenges of tackling the problem as well as the solutions. Uh, but before I uh, hand over to, to Ronnie, just a couple of housekeeping issues. Uh, there's some clipboards uh, floating around. Uh, if you put your email address on those, we can keep you up to date on politics in the pub. There's also some Australia Institute show bags floating around. Um, next week, if you are not on our list, uh, next week we have Kelvin Thompson uh, speaking at an event co-sponsored by us and Sustainable Population Australia. Uh, so Kelvin's talking on uh, on population, obviously, uh, but that will be at the Canberra Club, uh, which is just up the road, uh, because um, we don't anticipate, well, we need, we need quite a big venue. Uh, so uh, without any further ado, I'll hand over to Ron, and after her talk, I'm sure she'll be happy to take some questions. So, um, so you, Ron. security but if you need me to hold it because you can't hear I'd happily hold it um, I would normally acknowledge it's the nano people, the nano -wall people <laughs> of the uh, on his land we find ourselves here today and I pay my respects to the elders past and present I feel incredibly honored and so thank you so very much because I'm not sure I would have come to listen to me in this weather so thank you so much for braving this awful weather. Thank you. Um, I left Sydney and it was just starting to rain, but it wasn't as cold as it is here. So I, I'd love to share with you just a little bit about my own personal journey, about how and why I started Oz Harvest. And really, I think what we really need to be talking about in the big picture is the, the, the challenges of food waste, but also the challenges of feeding 7 billion people in our, on our planet today and, and really where we find ourselves. So if I can just share with you a little bit about my story, because that's really what I know best, and then, we'll talk, and then I'll, I'll branch out and, and share more. So just a little bit of history. I, you will probably hear from my accent that I have a speech defect. I was born in South Africa, <laughs> but some of you might recognize that accent. Um, I came to Australia 22 years ago. I came with no work, with um, my then husband and two young boys, and it, it didn't take long for me to realize that actually if I worked hard, it took a while for my husband to get work. And I got work in the event industry, in floristry, which is what I had done before I came. And over the years, I built that up and, and left the florists. I had three florists at one point. Um, and I built up an event business. And I, my break came. I was working from my garage in my home. And I got a phone call saying, will you tender for Star City? the opening of the casino, which is just having its new reincarnation right now. And luckily, I'm not in that business, so I didn't get asked to, to tender to take care of the opening. Um, so for a business entrepreneur who had built up a little business in her garage to be asked to tender and then win the tender for Star City opening 
was quite a big jump from where I had come from. And so I moved from my garage to a warehouse because I felt that that would look much more prestigious than the address of my garage. But slowly built up a business that never made me millions, didn't make me a lot of money, but certainly provided me with a roof over my head and food on my table. And the reason I stress and, and sound a little bit like a wanker when I say I didn't make a lot of money, but I say it because over the last seven years I've probably had 2,000 people come to me and at some point say to me, one day I'm going to do what you have done. One day when I've made as much money as you obviously make. And the truth is that I've worked full time in, in my business until last year when I was given an opportunity to actually switch and, and earn money doing what I love doing now and, and earn a salary from Oz Harvest so I could give up my business. And I just think that's an aside on a personal level for me to stress that actually doing what I've done is not about having had enough money and being a bored housewife. It was about reaching a point in my life eight years ago when I did look at my kids and realize that they were healthy and happy and beautiful and that I had as an independent person managed to raise a family and run a business and put food on my table. And so I started thinking what else could I do and how could I contribute to the world? I mean, initially I don't think I thought I'd contribute to the world. I thought if I could just con contribute to my community, that would be significant. And I'm still not really sure why I didn't go and volunteer for the Cancer Council and just be done with it. But clearly, I had decided that what I really wanted was a big contribution. And so looking at my skills and thinking about what I knew, over the years when I put on events, I was actually the creator of an enormous amount of waste because I believe in generosity and abundance and I was representing clients and as the representative of that client, if you were coming to an event of mine, I didn't want my client ever to be in a position where they thought we'd run out of food or there wasn't that feeling that they were entertaining abundantly because abundance around food is all about a good feel, it's about sharing and caring and, and so I was creating an enormous amount of waste. When I could during the years, I would take it to the one agency that I knew in Sydney, which was Matthew Talbot. If any of you know Sydney or know anything about the Matthew Talbot home, it is situated just behind the Porsche, the Maserati and the Ferrari dealers. It's kind of one of those ironic things. and. It is a confronting place to go to at 10 or 11 or 12 at night when you finish the day's work and the streets are just lined with bodies and, and a mass really of human suffering and human disadvantage. So I knew that and occasionally my boys would help me um, and we would drop food off. But it certainly was not the norm because I often had to battle or fight with the, the um, caterers who had, I had hired, I had paid, but had to actually remind them that actually this was my food because I bought it and that it was okay to give it away. And so I started thinking about really what could I do that was significant and I figured I didn't know that there was food and I knew that there were people and that if I could make that combination that perhaps it would be a really good thing. And while I was mulling over how to do this and how best to start and where to start, I think the universe has a way, certainly in my life, the universe has a way of conspiring to bring me what I need. And I figured I'd visit my sister in America, and I share this only because I think it's really important if we if there are models one can emulate, then why waste time reinventing the wheel? But I, I quite by chance heard about an organization in America and figured that the best thing I could do would be to go and check it out. And off I went and that experience was quite amusing, but of course the person that I needed to meet, I was going to go to LA because that's where my sister is. 
and I figured when I get to LA and I found this founder and these people, I would just fly to wherever it was. But of course, that person was in LA waiting for me. And I arrived at that airport and I had said to my sister, you find this person, because when I called from, from Sydney, every time I called this organization that I'd heard, I got, if you have food, just leave your number. And so I couldn't get to ask anything. So I called my sister, I said, find me the founder. <coughs> and I arrived off the plane, and my sister comes to me, and I said, so have you found the founder? Have, you, have I got someone to call? She says, do you think we could go home first? <laughs> and I said, no, because I might be flying somewhere. Anyway, she hands me the phone, and I call this person, and I say to her, hi, my name's Ronnie Khan, and I've just arrived from Sydney, and I'm just here because what I want to do is I want to learn everything I can about food rescue so that I can go and do that in Sydney because I know I can do it. I know people, and I know that I can do it. And I see my sister's eyeballs rolling. <laughs> <laughs> and I get off the phone, and I say, so what did I do wrong? She says, you're in Los Angeles, and you're telling them that you know people, and you know this, you sound pathetic. I said, but I needed her to understand that I really had the skills to do this. Anyway, I met her, I went out, I checked out other organizations, and at the end of a week, I came back armed with knowledge and figured it would take me one month. That's what I gave myself to start Oz Harvest. I figured on the plane already I knew I would call it Oz Harvest. I knew that I wanted yellow. I knew that I wanted, I knew exactly how it would look. And I figured it was just going to be so easy because I'd make three phone calls to the three richest people in Australia and why wouldn't they want to support us? Who wouldn't want to see on their trucks rescuing food for the charities of Australia? And who, who cares so much about Australian products and food and had made millions of dollars, why wouldn't he just want to give me money because he knows that I'm supporting taking food in Australia and feeding people? And then I figured, you know, another billionaire of ours who runs supermarkets, etc., super uh, shopping centers, of course he'd want to be involved. Anyway, I'm still waiting for some of them to return my call. <laughs> but Lynn Fox has very recently come on board as a major supporter. So we're very excited about that one. But it did take seven years. The point is that when I realized that they weren't going to return my calls, I figured it actually didn't matter if it took me till the rest of my life because what I was going to do was <coughs> set up a food rescue organization and I would just find and make it happen. And in fact, I was a little bit like the Pied Piper because every time I said to anyone, what we're going to do is we're going to rescue food and deliver it to people in need, they said that is the most brilliant thing. I thought of that. I haven't done it. But what can I do to help? And so along the way, it just just grew because people wanted to help. And I guess if I ask each and every one of you that the inherent piece in our culture, the inherent thing that we all know is that first of all, we have to eat to survive. And I think if I ask each and every one of you, and I will ask, how many of you had your mother, your grandfather, somebody in your family say to you, eat your food because there's someone starving somewhere. <laughs> exactly. I will tell you, my mother told me there were people starving in China. I told you I was born in South Africa. My people were starving in China. She didn't even know they were around the corner. Seriously. But the point is, I didn't have to educate anybody because we all just know that we shouldn't waste food. And so it was as if we had opened up a groundswell and a, and a possibility for people to join into something that is meaningful to all. And, and so it took us a year to set up. And on November 2004, our first van left the office. And I have to tell you, I pinched myself black and blue. There was a van, and it said with none. Rescue, I could cry just thinking about it. <laughs> Rescuing food for the charities of Sydney. And in that month, we delivered the equivalent of 13,000 meals and delivered it to eight different organizations. And I just couldn't believe it. Last month, in Sydney, well, actually, in last month, nationally, we delivered over 200,000 meals to over 355 different organizations that feed people in need. 
yesterday, Dave tells me that here in Canberra,